Hello everyone! In this tutorial we will learn how to derive a formula for Taylor series expansion or approximation of functions. This tutorial is just one tutorial in a series of tutorials explaining fundamental and basic concepts from physics, mathematics and mechanics that every engineer as well as engineering student need to know. In sharp contrast to a number of YouTube tutorials and in a sharp contrast to a number of YouTubers who want to teach math online, my approach is to teach you how to derive formulas. That is, my approach is not to teach you how to memorize formula, instead my approach is to teach you what's happening behind the scenes and how math works. Only in that way you can become an excellent engineer and you will be successful in your career. That is, try to learn how something works behind the scenes. Before I start, I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as more than 300 video tutorials on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like, subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's start. Let us suppose that we have a function f of x. This function can be, for example, a sinusoidal function or an exponential function or a combination of these functions. The main assumption is that this function is differentiable. That is, its derivatives exist. Now, let us assume that we selected a point A and let us assume that we want to approximate the function f of x around or about this point. Now, we are not looking for any approximation. Instead, we are looking for an approximation in a polynomial form. Later on, I will explain why it is the polynomial form. However, let us assume that we want to approximate the function like this. k0, where k0 is a constant that we need to determine, plus k1 multiplying x minus a, plus k2 multiplying x minus a squared, and plus k3 multiplying x minus a to the power of 3. Okay, let us sketch a graphical representation of this approximation. Here's our x-axis and on this axis we will place f of x and its approximation. Let our original function f of x look like this. This is f of x. Let the point A be the point over here. This is A. We want to determine this approximation over here such that in some relatively small or even relatively large depends neighborhood of A, we can accurately approximate this function. So, for example, in this neighborhood over here, this function, and I'm going to sketch it with blue color, approximate our f of x function relatively well. So this will be, let's say, an approximation of f of x. And this approximation should be a polynomial given over here. So f of x should be k0 plus k1 x minus a plus k2 x minus a squared plus k3 x minus a to the power of 3. What's happening over here? If we substitute 
a over here, we will obtain that our f hat of a, that is the approximation of our x, f of x, is equal to k0. This coefficient is very easy to find. So the coefficient k0 is obviously the value of function at the point a. However, we need to determine these other coefficients. Now, let us explain once for all why the polynomial approximation is so important. Let us analyze this polynomial. Can we write a C, C++, Python, MATLAB, Java, or a code in any programming language that will implement this approximation? Yes, we can do that. Why is that? Because to compute this polynomial, we only need to perform several operations. We need addition, and of course, subtraction is the same as addition. We need multiplication, and do we need to raise something to the power of 2? Well, we don't need to do that, because this term over here, x minus a to the power of 3, can be computed recursively. That is, we can compute x minus a, and let this be, for example, s. Then, to compute x minus a squared, we simply need to take s and multiply with s. And let this be called z. Then, to compute x minus a to the power of 3, we simply need to take z and multiply by s. That is, we can perform this operation recursively. And that's why the polynomial approximation is very attractive and very important from the computational point of view. Now, let us consider the most general case. We want to approximate our function f of x as k0 plus k1 multiplying x minus a plus k2 multiplying x minus a squared plus k3 multiplying x minus a to the power of 3 plus k4 multiplying x minus a to the power of 4 and plus up to infinity. That is, these polynomial terms, x minus a to the power of i, where i arbitrary number repeat themselves and i increases. Okay. Our goal is to determine these constants, k0, k1, k2, k3, k4, k5, up to infinity. That is, our task is to derive a formula for computing k0. And the formula should depend on a function f and on our a. Let's see how to do this. Okay, so let's see k0. f of a is, let's see, k0. And how about these other terms? Well, these other terms are equal to 0. This is because they depend on x minus a. And if we substitute x for a, we obtain zeros. Consequently, Here's how we compute k0. How about k1? To compute k1, let's compute the first derivative of this expression. Let's see what we have. This term is 0. Then we have k1, right? Since the derivative of this term is 1. What happens over here? Plus 2k2 multiplying x minus a. What is happening over here? Plus... 3k3 multiplying x minus a to the power of 2 plus 4k4 multiplying x minus a to the power of 3. And I'm not going to write these other entries. Here you can see the pattern. Okay, again, let's see what is f prime of a. Aha, uh -huh. I have here k1. What happens over here? Hmm, nothing. Because I have zeros over here, if I substitute x for a, I obtain zero. And all the terms are zero. And consequently, we obtain that k1 is f prime of a divided by 1. That is, to compute k1, I take the first derivative of f and evaluate the first derivative at a. Okay, this was k1. 
How about k2? Well, to compute k2, let's compute the second derivative of our function x, f of x. Let's see what's happening. Here we obtain 0. How, how about here? What happens? I have 2 times k2. And the derivative of this term is 1. What happens over here? Plus. Now, watch, watch out here. I have 3 multiplying 2 multiplying k3 multiplying x minus a. Perfect. How about this term over here? Let's see what do we have. We have 4 multiplying 3 multiplying k4 multiplying x minus a to the power of 2. Hmm, perfect. And I have other terms that depend on x minus a. Let's see what do we get if you evaluate this expression at a. Let's see. I have 2k2. Mm -hmm. And how about the other terms? Well, the other terms are equal to 0. This is because they depend on x minus a. And from this simple equation, I obtain that k2 is equal to f second derivative of a, that is, the second derivative of f evaluated a, divided by 2. However, I will write this 2 as 2 times 1. Now, to make this video tutorial as clear as possible, I erased everything and I just repeated the second derivative of x. Okay, let's continue. What's happening over here? Next, let's try to compute k3. To compute k3, we need to take the third derivative of this term over here. The third derivative in calculus is usually denoted like this. Note that this is not the third power of the function f, this is simply the third derivative of our function. So let's compute the third derivative. The third derivative is obviously 3 times 2 times 1 times k3. And note over here that I'm writing 3 times 2 times 1. You will see in a moment the reason for this. What do I have over here? Let's see what do I have. I have 4 times 3. Consequently, the first derivative is 4 times 3 times 2 times k4 multiplying x minus a. And I have higher order terms that I will not write and they depend on x minus a. Let's see what is the third derivative of our function f evaluated at the point a. Let's see what happens. Obviously, I only have this term, 3 times 2 times 1 multiplying k3. How about these higher order terms? Well, the higher order terms are equal to 0 because they die out due to these terms. Okay, from this equation, I obtain the formula that k3 is third derivative of f evaluated at a divided by 3 times 2 times 1. Now you can immediately see that we can write this term as 3 factorial. To remind you, n factorial is n multiplying n minus 1 multiplying n minus 2 until 1. Consequently, the term k3 can be expressed as a factor of 3, that is, divided by 3 factorial. How about the term k4? Let's see. We need to compute the fourth derivative of our function. The fourth derivative of the function is, obviously, let's see, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 multiplying k4 and plus higher order terms here that depend on x minus a. Now, the fourth derivative of our function evaluated at a is obviously 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 multiplying k4. From this expression, we obtain that k4 is equal to fourth derivative of our function f evaluated at a divided by 4 times 3 times one, 2 times 1. Okay. Now you can already 
see the pattern. What is the Kn coefficients of this expansion? Let's now state the general formula. Our function f of x under some mild condition can be approximated as this sum, sum ki, where i goes from 0 to infinity, ki multiplying what? x minus a to the power of i. Okay, where ki is i derivative of our function f evaluated at a divided by i factorial. That is, we have i to derivative of a divided by i multiplying i minus 1 multiplying i minus 2 until 1. And this is the general formula for the Taylor series expansion of our original function f. And in this video tutorial, you learn how to recursively derive these coefficients so you can easily remember them. You take f, you compute the i derivative, you evaluate it at a, you divide everything by i factorial, and you will obtain the coefficient ki. Sufficiently smooth functions can be approximated by relatively few order terms over here. And keep in mind that. Okay, this will be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.